David Cherwack here, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on Underbird Turntable. So, this tutorial was suggested by xphilippe12, and here's an example of the trick, Underbird Turntable. Alright, so there was an example of the trick. So before you start this trick, I suggest that you go back and watch the tutorial that I did last week, which was just a tutorial for Swing Underbird. So make sure you watch that and you're comfortable with Underbird and the stall. And just really comfortable with how it feels and how to pull up to it. So check that out last week if you haven't already. Um, the other trick you're going to want to know is turntable. So if you're not comfortable with a big cup turntable, this trick is going to be pretty difficult. So we'll learn that first. There's probably lots of tutorials on YouTube on it, so check that out. I think I might have a tutorial as well. So learn turntable and obviously learn Underbird because that's what the trick is, those two tricks put together. So let's just get right into this trick. So this is a pretty advanced trick, so don't expect to learn it super quickly. But um, first, you're going to need a Dama that you think is really good for stalls, so get your most honed Dama for stalls. Um, make sure to lick that bevel, that will definitely help. But let's get into this. So the first and most important thing, I think, is the grip. So before when you pulled up to normal underbird, you just held the Ken. Crap, got a knot in the string or a tangle. Um, you just held the Ken normally in the normal underbird kind of grip. Um, but when you pull up to turntable underbird, you're going to need to do it differently. So for the first underbird, you did it kind of like this with your hand down further on the ken so the tongue won't touch your fingers. Um, what I do is it's kind of a really weird grip. What I do is I put my two fingers, my pointer finger and my middle finger on the small cup because that's how I do turntables. I usually just, I put those two on and then I spin with my pointer finger. It spins on my pointer finger. Not sure that if that's how everyone does it, but that's how I do it. So put those two fingers there, and then the rest of your fingers, kind of thumb goes there, and these fingers kind of rest right here. So that means when you pull up to board balance, as you can see, it's not touching any part of my hand or my fingers. And I've got my thumb there, and my fingers in border or not border balance um, turntable position, ready to do the turntable. So just practice this position and pulling up like this. It's a lot different um, from the normal position, so just get really comfortable with it. Um, so get comfortable with this pull up and balancing the bird in this position with your fingers back here. Um, and as you can see, like I said, it's not gonna touch any part of your finger if you're doing it right. Um, next part is you're gonna wanna make sure that the, the stall is really like locked in. Um, you can kinda feel when it's locked in. And kind of give it a little feel like this um, make sure that it's really locked in and there's no really way to explain it just you can kind of feel it so um, you can tell when it's like a good one and when it's not so um, that was a good one as you can see it just stayed there it was locked in um, but just feel around with it and the one other thing before you actually do the turntable is you kind of want to make sure that the Tama is straight onto the uh, cup you don't want it slanted anyway like this because that's going to make it a lot harder for the turntable it's going to slip off a lot easier um, so make sure that it's straight and actually the last thing make sure that the underbird isn't vertical like this or like pointed downwards kind of make it horizontal like this because that's what's going to make the turntable the easiest when you're learning it is because obviously on big cup when you do a turntable it's more horizontal so when you do the underbird turntable, you're gonna wanna make sure it's horizontal so you get that same feeling. So get comfortable with the underbird kind of more horizontal like this. After you have all those steps, the grip, the straight on Tama, getting it feeling locked in, um, the horizontal or yeah, not pointed downwards can, you can do the actual turntable. 
So what you're gonna do, like you would with any other turntable, you're gonna bend your knees, start giving it the momentum, and just let it spin on one finger. Now it's gonna feel kinda weird because the weight distribution of like the can and the tom, it's all just off because of more weight back here. It's gonna feel really weird. But just practice with the feeling. Um, you're gonna notice it's gonna feel like it's rotating a lot slower. Um, as you can see, it looks like it rotates a lot slower and you're just gonna have to get used to that. Um, make sure when you're rotating that your hands and thumb are out of the way because the spike might hit it right here. And just really be focused on keeping it really straight and um, being really good with normal turntables will definitely help with that. So be really consistent with these. Knowing doubles will definitely help. So be consistent with turntables. That will definitely help with this because it's a weird feeling trick. Um, but once you get it down, it won't be that hard. So after you've done the turntable, say it goes around like this, it's gonna feel kind of weird. Um, try and just catch it down here on this part of the can so that you're not touching the tama at all. So when you do the turntable, rotate it and catch the can down here so that you're able to spike it in a normal kind of grip. And then once you get it on to this part after the turntable, you can just spike it whatever way you want. I don't know why I can spike it, but there. Um, so that's basically it for this tutorial. Um, like I said, it's gonna feel really weird, but the most important things are being really consistent with normal turntables on a big cup, having that grip right, making sure it's horizontal, uh, make sure it's really locked in into that underbird stall, and then just lots of practice, and make sure it doesn't touch your fingers after you land it, so kinda try and catch it like this, and then you can, like I said, spike it whatever way you want. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully that helped. I'm not the best at this trick, but I think I understand it good enough to do a tutorial on it. Um, make sure to leave your suggestions for next week's tutorial down below. Um, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.